Hello and welcome to Unlocked, episode 371. We've come so far. I'm Miranda Sanchez hosting for Ryan McCaffrey while he's out and he's missing potentially a very spicy episode. This week we're talking about Fallout 76 and our impressions of it. Uh, and then we have a lot of news coming up. There's potentially a new Xbox One unit coming out. There are rumors about an discless Xbox One. So that'll be very interesting if that actually comes to fruition. And then finally, we are talking about the biggest news from last week. Sony is skipping E3. What does that mean for Microsoft? Well, I have a great panel to talk about that with. Starting with Destin Legary. Hi, everybody. Hello, welcome. Bam. I was going to say, where's, where's the bam? <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> Not going anywhere. And uh, Brandon Tyrell. Hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it gets everybody amped. I know. It's oh, just like, man. great. I'm so ready. Like, I it. kind of prepare myself mentally for it. I'm just like, all right. And then, <laughs> then it didn't the happen. Bam. Then you just surprise us with it. It's like a sucker punch. You can open it. Got to throw you off your guard. Yeah. And then our guest today. Brendan Graber, hello. Whenever Bam is not present, people should ask me, where is Bam? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, yeah, that's uh, always a way to start episode. It's very exciting. I like it. Yeah. Keeping it. Yeah, this uh, this side of the table, though, is very confusing. Brendan and Brandon. It's going to be good. good Sorry. Good. No relation. Thanks, guys. Good luck, host. <laughs> that you know of. No, thanks. Yeah. So um, I'll just uh, kick it to you two to start off with Fallout 76. Yeah. We have a, a lot to talk about. There's... Again, like I said, some thoughts. <laughs> yeah, we have thoughts. Some passionate yeah. thoughts. Some, some thoughts. muted a little bit uh -huh. for reasons. Yeah. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> you want me to just pick? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go so for I'm it. reviewing Fallout 76 for IGN. Um, I've been doing a review in progress for, oh, my entire life, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, God, it started last Tuesday, I want to say. So just about a week now. Um, I'm not going to get too deep into it. Uh, I don't. I don't really feel. Uh, I, I want the review to go up first before uh, I really share all my in-depth thoughts. I think it's just. It's just. It's fair to put a score on it. But I will say that I have some some pretty deep tr uh, problems with the game. Um, I don't. I don't think it's a bad game. I think it is a mediocre game. Right, and like, there's a difference between those, right? Yeah. Sometimes I'll ask people. Well, is it bad or is it not good? Yeah, exactly. Because people don't use the word mediocre every every now and then. Just mm -hmm. like very infrequently comes up, and I just need to emphasize, like, hey, there's a difference between something that is actually very bad, mm -hmm. and then was it? Eh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, Those noises. That's how we're gonna start doing our, <laughs> our reviews. It's a solid. Eh. Uh, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah, so I, I think that we live sort of, or, or we're in this culture now, where if it's not, if it's not the... <laughs> not beer, I promise, not beer. Hey. The All right, happy Tuesday. <laughs> uh, if it's not the best thing ever, then it's the worst thing ever. And that's not true. There are shades of gray between those for, you know, at forever. Um, I think Fallout 76 has some bright spots. Um, I think it's got a lot of weak spots. We've all talked about this exhaustively um, with ourselves, so we wanted to kind of open it up and, and share those thoughts. But um, I, I don't think it's a stretch to say that Fallout 76 is not the game anyone was hoping it would be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and give it over to Brendan and Destin and, and Miranda to, to expound on that because my full final review with a score, it's got a number <laughs> and everything, uh, comes out tomorrow on Wednesday. So uh, Ooh, tune in and wait. check that out. And with that... Uh, uh, I will answer questions as they come up, <laughs> but I'm biting my tongue. So I guess <laughs> after you, I probably played the most. Uh, I even played earlier because I went to a preview event and saw it kind of expand slightly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you powered through a lot longer than I have because I'm writing the guide, but it's kind of a slow process for me and like documenting every area and collectible and stuff. Um, but yeah, I still have had a lot of time with this game and seeing the different things it has to offer. I haven't really explored the whole end game aspects yet, but I've seen that on Twitch a little bit. Um, so how are the death claws? There are death claws. No, but how are they? Deathy. They're they're Perfect. cute. Perfect. They're really cute. <laughs> they're, I had to kill two. I'm sorry. No, my babies. Oh my god, I've killed so many death claws. Here's the problem with those guys: Murderer. is like they're melee only. They can throw rocks at you, but it's it's paltry amount of damage. Um, but the AI in Fallout 76 is such that if you get on a ledge where they can't reach you, you're just like, all right, I can kill you with a tiny pistol now. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that happens. There's like a few projectile attacks that some enemies they like, have. They like swipe the They're ground. Just like, Death Claws in particular. Here's a rock. Yeah. I'm just like, oh. Just uh, just fun things. fact, there is an island in, in West Virginia called Death Claw Island. <gasps> Named so for its Death Claws in the real world. Yeah. Wow. I had no idea. I'm going to yeah. live there. 
<laughs> no. I will say this. I love them so much. Oh my God. You've been bursting at the seams. I've been I waiting. I wanted oh everybody God. to you see. Can you can see this I'll tiny go later. Vein. You just get your thing out of the way. You can see All this right. vein in his forehead. If, if a friend asked me if they should play Fallout 76, and many have, I would say do not play Fallout 76 for $60. If you're getting the cheap version of the game, mm -hmm. I would expect something a little bit more functional and complete. Enemies will randomly spawn in front of you. The AI is non-existent. This is a bad game. I would say bad. And you should not play it. Do not give Bethesda your money. Do not support this product. Don't. So when I said potentially some spice, this is the spice. <laughs> yeah, I think we have. I know there's people out there enjoying it. There are no, people sure. out there yeah. enjoying it, of course. And that's fine. You can enjoy it. I cannot recommend this product to anybody. I think it really depends on Very what you're looking for. And if you are looking for that Fallout 4, single player, my choices matter, having an effect on the world experience, this is not that experience. I'm looking for a Fallout game, and it does not exist in this product. There, there are pieces. I mean, yes, sound, it does. This, yeah, is, the sound this is the definition of a Fallout game. The yeah. sound effects are there. There's the crafting systems are there. I would so say that has the, all the products, but like without yeah. the NPCs, it it really loses the charm. I the don't entirely agree with that. Uh, I Ooh, think fight. a there are NPCs. There's just not any human NPCs, which is a very weird claim to make. And sometimes that actually makes an interesting storyline or a quest system. And sometimes it's very kind of obvious that they just didn't know what to do. It's like, hey, here's a hollow tape, whatever. Um, and talking, I love listening to hollow tape. Yes, okay. I think the the yeah, yeah. the white spring thing. Yeah, yeah. Is done Without very going cool. too deep into it, uh, I did that last night, and uh, we're talking about one of these sort of end game style quests where. Uh, it really does take the structure of Fallout 76 in that you go to an area, you find a tape, you play it, and you're like, oh, okay, now I get to follow this breadcrumb trail. Or you go to an area, and there's just an AI there, like Grafton, or I'm um, sorry, Morgantown. Or Grafton. The, Mo the Morgantown mayor. Mm -hmm. Am I no, misremembering that? It's Grafton mayor. It is Grafton. I was so happy when I met him because I was like, oh, my God, dialogue. <laughs> no, 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 it's not dialogue. He doesn't ever talk to you. He talks at you. Yeah. So all of the all of the characters in the world are AI and they're all mm. they're all just I mean, they're, they're broadcasting. They're not yeah. pre-recorded messages, but they're just talking at you. You have zero input on how this conversation goes. Right. Mm -hmm. It will start at A and end at Z, and then you will take that information and you will go do something else. And then you go kill some enemies and then suck blood out of them and bring back the samples. Super yeah. fun mission structure. Yeah, essentially. Okay, I was like, where are we going with this? What? Go uh, collect five flowers and bring them back. Yeah, pretty much. Very few of those quests. You're a gopher quest, but there is a late game quest uh, that does take that structure and kind of turns it on its side. On its side with this sort of ominous, deep secret society kind of spin on it. Yeah, and it actually works. Like it, it's cool. And I said this in my uh, my uh, review and progress update yesterday, where. The end game quests have set pieces that make you forget the monotony of the quest system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are four Scorch Beasts just bombarding this bunker that you have to get into. Yeah. Um, there are crazy secret societies that you uncover, and you know, stuff like that makes uh, the quest system fun. But those are those are the exception rather than the rule. Right. It's yeah. like, it, there's not enough of that to kind of carry you through the yeah. entirety of its quest system. I mean, the, major the majority of the first 10 hours are you following some lady's journals yep. right. across the wasteland, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, that is not... <laughs> there's no agency in that. Like, I, I'm not doing anything other than just a, a I checklist. would say it's it's a, it's a testament sometimes to how well or not well systems can mesh together and that this game feels like there are a lot of different systems at play and they don't always play nice together. Right. Like, the level design in this game, the way that these areas are built, the stories that they tell them themselves are all really well done. I love Fallout's level design, and I think that they still did a great job making these locations, making them unique, making them interesting. But when they start adding, you know, the quests or lack thereof, when, a, when you walk by an area and it says, says, miscellaneous, go look at this place. I'm like, that's not a quest. That's just... That's just a giant just arrow like a, saying, hey, check you it out. You wandered into an area. Yeah, yeah, it's like you've been tasked with something. Do it, I guess. And it just but on, on the flip side, like and I once like went into a, a fire department and there's a big poster for like, check out these really awesome excavator machines. I click on it and it gives me a quest. Like that was like an eye-catching thing that led to a breadcrumb trail. Right, it I doesn't thought, have enough discovery there, right? Yeah. Like but like just saying like, hey, things, there's a thing here. Go look for it. Right. All too often with the quest system, I'll go to finish a quest and they just patch this one infamous quest where you have to repair an item. The token, that you the token machine. They fixed it mm -hmm. last week. I go there 
after the patch, <laughs> I this finished this morning. It. I was yeah, you were watching me play this, this morning. Yeah. And it's like either defend the fort or defend the parking lot. And I'm standing there. And I'm like, nothing is happening. There's a red bar enemy. I shoot him. He doesn't react. So I just stand there. Like, it's like defend the parking lot. All right, I'm defending the parking lot, I guess. And great job. There's no way to progress the mission. It just, I don't know what happened. Yeah. It, it's yeah. totally bugged. And I kept encountering that. So, and that's if I managed to maintain a connection long enough to finish that quest mm -hmm. and it doesn't reset my progress back to the beginning of the adventure. I think that's a little disingenuous. I There's, don't, I don't, that, that happened to me points. several times on stream during an eight hour session. Really? Yeah. Yeah. During an eight hour, like, I, I've been playing like probably in, 10 hour chunks, maybe yeah. 12 hour chunks. And I'll get disconnected four or five times during that setting. So yeah. I, once every couple hours. Oof. But um, you you don't, it's not with the frequency that you get disconnected from an event over and over. Like it's not, all right, I have three minutes to finish this before the inevitable disconnect happens. Um, it's not that bad. Having said that, what you're describing right now is a public event, which are notoriously like, weird if somebody starts it and then leaves sometimes you don't kick off the progress in that or if somebody huh. completes it it doesn't update that it was completed so when you get there or if you load into it there are so many like caveats you know there are so many variables there's, yeah, yeah. There's strange variables to even think about though as a player like that's that shouldn't be your burden yeah, no, abs absolutely not. Yeah. Like there are things where if I fast travel from this particular area, the ambient sound can sometimes carry with me, and it's oh. like I oh, so it's like the wrong sound for the area. You're, you're yeah, yeah. There was there's uh, I built a camp with a bunch of turrets, and I fast traveled to another area, and then the, my turret sounds were just playing. Or uh, to give you another example, a uh, super mutant, uh, not a super mutant, a uh, angler, lobbed this big gloppy fireball at me. It's, it's like a fish creature, uh, lopped this big gloppy fireball at me and caught me on fire. I had the status effect of being on fire, so I'm taking damage. But then the status effect wore out, and yet the visuals of the fire were still on me. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm trying to aim, and there's just, like, plumes of flame coming up in front of my <laughs> cursor. And I couldn't, like, it was debilitating. So It's part of you now. You know that noise? I left the server, rejoined, didn't didn't clear it out. I had to close the application. You know that noise they make when, you, like, you uh, get in power armor, you offload, like, you're, like, you hear, like, the, the <laughs> junk rattle? Like, oh, yeah. Like, you're, like, <sighs> yeah. So when I was working on my power armor station, it just kept making that noise, like, ah, <laughs> 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 I'm just like, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, he just kept, like, just <laughs> taking it, <his laughs> <time, like, laughs> dropping <laughs> it, and then getting it, and then dropping it again, just like, what's going on? I can't tell. Am I in the armor? <laughs> He's angry. I, yeah. I'm glad we can find humor in these issues, <laughs> here's at the thing. least. Yeah, here's the thing. Is Bethesda games have always been buggy, but they've always been yeah. hilarious where a giant in Skyrim hits a saber cat, and, and it goes flying, flying 800 <laughs> feet in the air. Yeah. That's awesome. hilarious. Yeah. When your power armor bugs out, like you guys saw on the stream yesterday, yeah. and Max is this weird, lanky monster <laughs> in underwear, that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. But where to go? But when a quest doesn't update, when I get disconnected from a server, right. when I've mm -hmm. uh, invested so much time capturing workshops and building uh, uh, extractors to get these resources, and then I get dropped from a server and I come back and they're all gone, right. not only have I wasted my time, I've wasted my resources. Yeah, like those are not funny. The mm -hmm. fundamental problems with this game are not funny. All the small little quirky Bethesda bugs and, and things like that are funny. Those are funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, my biggest problem with it so far for the little mm -hmm. bit I've played, so I only got to play during the beta. I do have the new game downloaded. I'm excited because I'm going to play with my little sister because yeah. she really loves Fallout. And I was like, oh, it's a cool thing we can do together. Um, but during my time with the beta, it felt like kind of going back to what Brendan was saying that a lot of these systems don't feel like they mesh together very well. So like it's trying to do like this big survival, go out into the world and explore yeah. things, but it's also telling you what to explore constantly. It's like mm -hmm. do these things. Um, there's I think the PvP thing really throws me off a lot because I yeah. kind of would have liked to see some sort of level of engagement there beyond just hello fellow sir, would you like to duel? Yeah, <laughs> would yes. you like to shoot me? I have shot you. Please respond and with er a bullet. <laughs> er early game, you're so de incentivized to face off in combat that yeah. it's just like why would you do that yeah if you have like yeah. if you have like yeah. five shotgun ammo left like do i want to waste it all on this guy and then not get anything for that yeah 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 i think um i kind of let myself down in a way because i had that frame rate. sorry <laughs> wow um i had expectations for this, this to kind of give me that rust feel but fallout yeah and it's very far from that it was a, to so. be to be fair sorry not uh, to cut you off um, to be fair, that's not entirely your fault. Like this game was marketed to a degree as a survival game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is not a survival game, whatsoever. You just collect resources and build up your base. Yeah, I mean, like you could see that the framework for some sort of weird Rust esque or Daisy esque survival game is in there. Yeah, but it 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 was like 
it's like it, it's in the design doc, but it's just like something they never really got right. To. It's like they're mm-hmm. trying to figure out between one like kind of a more MMO style or Rust. That's and then actually they just try to what I wanted them. to talk about. The, the The thing that's really confusing for a long time now is you look at the parallel between Elder Scrolls Online and Fallout seventy six. Elder Scrolls Online, they didn't take the Elder Scrolls engine and mm-hmm. shove it in a multiplayer game. Yeah. They made an entire MMO type setting mm-hmm. with those rules in place and those kind of that UI in place where this is just Fallout 4, all of its UI, all of its systems yep. in a larger world. And, and, and I don't think that works. For, for me, I played Fallout 3 again recently and I didn't realize how often there were things that were interesting that you ran into when you were just... Like there's, there's supposed to be that feeling of uh, isolation and you definitely get that in Fallout 76 because you'll go to a town and then maybe in Fallout 3 something might be there that would be interesting, that would compel you forward, or there would be like uh, in-engine st- or uh, st- dynamic storytelling where you go to an area and there's something interesting there that you can discover. Mm-hmm. And I feel that's sorely lacking in Fallout 76. Yeah, well, like in Fallout 3 and 4, you have a woman in town going, my baby! And so mm-hmm. you have to like help her or you find uh, two factions shooting at each other or just talk to people. And you here know? that's computers, holotapes, notes. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like they've, they've traded... Uh, uh, dynamic storytelling and traditional storytelling for emergent storytelling where the that's what i was looking for yeah the the real sort of uh i guess stories you walk away from in this game are oh hey that time where you know i found a missile launcher and then i accidentally shot it and i killed myself you remember that that was mm-hmm. hilarious yeah like the yesterday in a stream max and i were uh in like fort defiance and i was taken to go see like this faction thing and i was like oh the door's unlocked that's good to go through the whole uh a sign that we went through that we, we played Mm-hmm. And I remember that, that there was that like level 40 ghoul we had to fight. And I was like, oh, I hope you won't find him again. But the door was open. I was like, okay, cool, we're here. And I hear this breathing noise. I look behind me, there's a Wendigo <laughs> oh, running no. at us. I'm just like, yeah. Max, run, run, run now. And like, that was a fun story yeah. that only happened to us. Didn't we have something different happen after we went there? So, like, I like that there is these different elements that could happen in these locations that are your story beats. Mm-hmm. But this is not a a grandiose adventure where you are the vault dweller hero that makes the the choices between survival and death between other mm-hmm. factions. Like you can't have a fallout three megaton event. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can't nuke a place and have it scarred forever because I mean, the other guy's going to nuke a place. You, you can nuke a place, can, but, but not, not in the traditional sense you mean where there's a story beat to set off a bomb. And then that town no longer for the entirety yeah. of the game, that town no longer an exists. hour later, it will be like nothing ever happened. Yep. And I, I, I mean, it, you nailed it when you said that. It's indicative of like taking this structure of a Fallout game and trying to squeeze it into a survival game. Um, and it just Fallout seventy six is is that it's a tired cliche, but it's a jack of all trades and a master of none. Right? Mm-hmm. It tries to do so much and doesn't commit to any of it well enough um, to to really succeed. I I think I'm mostly frustrated because I don't have any character motivation, and I really wanted to like Fallout seventy six. Find stuff. Craft Who cares? Why? Get some cool power. Well, I mean, armor. It, yeah. but so it's supposed to be a social stuff. game, right? Like, it's not yeah. supposed to give you that character motivation. The character is you. Like, you are supposed to go and play with your friends and have a good time, hopefully. Mm-hmm. And the other characters in this world are other people. And I think it is kind of cool you, to see um, people taking on roles mm-hmm. of actually like, making characters and be, acting like NPCs or leading new players to. There's build someone that's power already role playing as Preston Garvey. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's that like one. I think that's really cool to see that emerge, and I think that's what. Bethesda was hoping for here is like the idea is obviously there are no NPCs because the NPCs are the other people in this world inhabiting it and mm-hmm. hopefully that you'll engage with each other I, but relying on that without having incentives to make everybody play nice like if everyone's competing for like the nukes or just focusing on their own missions and it's kind of hard to like kind of push people toward that right I, I early on saw other players but as I progressed I'm like level 10 or 11 as mm-hmm. I got to that level I barely ever saw anybody else I think mm-hmm. I ran into one person who was doing his quest. He waved at us, then he ran away. And like that, Aww. that was the extent of <laughs> uh, the pe- the person I was playing with. That was our extent of like other character interaction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you post and, the misconnection? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you waved at me at the Morgan Town Airport. Yeah. <laughs> you I saw you. The- you were level 36. <laughs> <laughs> you were at the prison with the I was wearing bottle cap sunglasses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> you were you were the gaunt looking guy in a straight jacket yeah. and a burlap a sack for a mask. I was Fabio. My character's name is Fabio. I, I I will say that if emergent storytelling is the goal for this, then the tools to to really flesh it out aren't there mm-hmm. because right now it's a PVE experience yeah. and you can't really have emergent storytelling outside of hey that time we saw a Wendigo or that time all those scorch beasts came out. What makes great emergent storytelling is. Look at Sea of Thieves where, oh, man, we ran into this other pirate ship and then we fought for like a half hour and then we ended up being friends and we shook hands. Like that level of danger and that, and that level of like interaction with other players is only there in the structure of like the quest systems. You know, there's no interaction of uh, there's no aggression. There's no uh, danger between other players. So there's no real chance to be like, yeah, we ran into this other full party of power armored survivors and we fought and then we grouped up and killed a scorch beast. Like that can't happen right now. Especially yeah. when the PvP system is such like such kid gloves. Specifically because the PvP yeah, system and I, is I, I kid think gloves. And you can block fair. up sort of someone and they can't see you ever again. If you're just like, block this player, okay, bye. You're right. out of my life. I think it's fair to kind of mute that aggression for those players that do like to grief really hard. And I think that's what they're going for, but it felt like they pushed the needle too far. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, you, it there should really be a little bit down. of a middle ground. Like yeah. have a PVP server. Right. It feels watered down for the sake of like not offending anyone um, or not driving people away. And I totally understand that. But yeah. like uh, like I said in our, our beta impressions, like the very first piece of critical content we put up, um, put in an option to opt into a PVP server. Like, WoW was doing it in 2005, you yeah. know? Yeah, like they have that Hunter vs. Hunted Pip-Boy radio opt-in, but, like, yeah. no one knows that it exists. Mm-hmm. And you'll I ha- turned it on on accident once. And just, like, you know, it, it, it screams at you the entire time it's on. It's, like, waiting for other players. Wait, I didn't stand by. I'm just, like, there's, like, two guys. No one else knows it exists. And, yeah. like, yeah. in the meantime, it's just, like, okay. If you want to see a progress bar get stuck at three out of four players, <laughs> join into that. That's painful. Yeah. Well. Man, that's a lot of Fallout talk. I don't like Fallout. Let's do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Look for Brandon's review. He's played much more than yeah. I have, and I'm just an angry fan. I'm still having fun just exploring random places, but like, I think it's a game that you don't need to play if you. It's not the, the essential Fallout experience. You it's don't a, need to play it. It's a fun survival. I, I think like I'll, I'll Destin around. says don't play it. <laughs> You're doing. <laughs> Destin's on a very firm stance. That's fair. Just mad. Oh well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm really insulting. interested to see how this changes over time. Like these games are meant to live and breathe and change and. Hopefully evolve into I think something. one of my most pressing wonders is, can this be fixed? Is this something that you can update until you fix the main problems? Like Sea of Thieves getting content patches mm-hmm. to compensate for the lack what they had at launch. Like, Can you write this horse if the systems in place aren't exactly the best? Yeah, and that's that's my thing too. Is Fallout 76's problem isn't content. It's... yeah. The fact that, Current. yeah, its systems are at odds with each other and it contradicts itself all the time. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I, I don't know. I feel like had this game come out next year, it would be a totally different experience with that much more time to double check the design decisions and uh, fix a lot of the issues. Um, but we'll see. I, uh, there's nothing we can do now, but like see how it evolves. I'm actually really excited to read your review. Me too. Thanks. Yeah, good work already written way so way too much about, <laughs> way, way so much about this game i can't even, can't even use words yeah. anymore thank you good job so everyone please be sure to check out that review it is Wednesday. a lot of hard work for brandon so appreciate it yeah so uh before we get into the big news topics that we have this week let's talk about some little bits and pieces here and there of tidbits neat things mm. first off 343 streamed the Halo 2 E3 2003 single-player demo. It was about a 10-minute demo that they played through twice and added yeah. commentary. And it's really neat if you guys haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. Uh, who got to see it? I, I, I did the clip-outs for it, so I, I had watched the whole thing. It was, oh, it was really, really neat I remember to watch this. them play through the E3 demo. They were convinced that it was going to crash a whole bunch, and yeah. they broke <laughs> the heck out of it. They did a bunch of stuff they weren't supposed to. And it, it was really, really neat to, to take a look back at this this. Uh, playthrough. Who who remembers the E three demo? I do. Yeah, I remember. Where were you it, in two thousand three? Uh, I mean, physically, like, ge- <laughs> <laughs> like, like geography on the planet. Yes, I I, exactly. li- I lived in Mountain View, California, <laughs> where the Google comes. I think from. I was oh. a, a freshman in high school. I don't remember that E three. I was that. I was a junior in high school. It was a big moment. I don't remember 
it. I I, I remember it was, was the 10. one. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't see this, but it was the one with like the brutes on the ghosts, yeah. right? And it's, then he throws a sticky grenade, and the ghost like slides under. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. that's how it ended. That was the big climactic ending. Yeah. Okay. The whole he turns on the plasma grenade, and Cortana says, "Bet you can't stick it." Yeah. You're on. You're on. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. they go. Uh, it was really, really neat. And apparently they brought up the fact that a lot of journalists didn't believe it was running an engine at the time. Yeah, I remember that. Everyone's thinking that it can't be real. Yeah, so they would do demos behind closed doors where they would go off script slightly to just prove that it was oh. actually real and like running an engine. Hard to, to believe we're still doing this 10, yeah, 15 I know, right? years yeah. later. Yeah. This is like God of War uh, two years ago where mm -hmm. it was like, oh, no, in my game he took the right path. Oh, in my yeah. game he took the left path. But they both just kind of went like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They both went the same way. Or like yeah. The Last of Us, just like, ooh, he stopped for a second and looked at that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. he picked up a can and then uh, set it down. I, I thought it was really cool. We have a clip out on IGN if anybody wants to check it out. I think I think we cut it down to like uh, the a, best I fifteen minutes. Yeah, oh, it, it was I longer than fifteen. I think it's a twenty minute. It, the entire stream was over an hour. Neat. I'm gonna check that out. Uh, then we just simple run. Blah, blah, blah. Simple reminder: Just Cause Four IGN first is almost done. It's very good. Cool tornadoes and lots of explosions. People are gonna have a squirrel lot of fun. suits. Just cause. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Just Cause has, I think, finally taken over the mantle. Um, it's been in contention for a long time, but it's finally uh, taken up the mantle of that wacky game where you go in just to blow stuff up and see yeah. destruction and just fly around. I think f it used to be maybe Far Cry had that. A bit of Saints Row. Well, Saints Row yeah. a little bit, yeah. yeah. But I think Just Cause is, is like now the top tier uh, the top tier version of that experience. <laughs> People have shared some pretty cool clips of the previous game with us where they just do crazy stunt montages because mm -hmm. you have the grappling hook and yeah. the wingsuit and they'll like go through a bunch of mm -hmm. wires and things. People will do this in GTA also. Yes. But uh, it is it's awesome to watch people play at that level. Yeah. Or especially like when they get really creative with the uh, C4 propellant yeah. charges or something like yeah. put them on cows and then like they're, <laughs> they're walking a cow Aww. balloon. It's, yeah. It's it's. it's it's good. Shout out to Evolve Stunting for hey. sharing those with us. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and then next up, Sunset Overdrive is out on PC, in case you didn't hear. Love it's that game. Good game. That's that game is really, good. it has no right being as funny as it was. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, this looks like it's going to be trying too hard to like appeal to like to kids. And junk. I was laughing like the whole time I was playing the game. It's it, it doesn't take itself seriously, that's for sure. Brandon, yeah. you'll know this. Didn't somebody from Sunset Overdrive just go to the initiative recently? Uh, from, like I remember ins, seeing this from Insomniac. From uh one of the somebody from the Sunset Overdrive team ended up on Microsoft's initiative and that was like this week or last yesterday or something. No, I, I know like every three or four weeks there's another news story about how a game designer on X game um, went to like God of War. What that yeah. might not be the case, but like what have you, um, you know, moved over to the initiative. So I would totally believe that. Yeah. Um, and it seems like the pedigree of the of the talent there is starting to Exciting. to really build up. Yeah. Sunset Overdrive is a great game, though. Yeah, and it's we out talk now about it every PC. few episodes lately. It feels like because I remember we were talking about the movement and just how yeah it is and just colorful. That's why I was so excited for Spider Man. Because Insomniac does one thing, or if, it, sorry, let me rephrase that. You guys are great. <laughs> if Insomniac <laughs> does one thing really well, it's movement that makes me just not care about the game and just want to like move, like jump move around. And yeah. yeah. I made my character look like Beat from Jet Set Radio. Aww. And I was just like playing the music while I like <laughs> skateboarding everywhere. It just, it fits so well. I don't know nice. why, but I made mine look like Zach Ryan, but like, <laughs> but like a long haired. Hippie hipster version of it. He has like two long braids and his skinny jeans and the the, the brown leather shoes. I uh, see that. It worked. It worked really well. I'll take a picture of it and show you. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Thanks. Um. Last little thing we have is just a reminder: stay tuned to IGN Deals. Says at IGN Deals on Twitter for all the great Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. Our team tracks down. They work super hard on that. Yeah. I know they're already hard at work. There's been a lot of like pre Black Friday deals. Yeah. So yeah, it's that, crazy. It's that time it starts like a week. Now it's before. Black Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Yeah, I picked up my crazy. SD card through IGN Deals, and uh, I know Fallout is going to be in that that bundles <laughs> in that list. But yeah, uh, yeah uh, Justin Davis and Seth Macy are our commerce team, and this is their E3, so uh, 
definitely check out. I think if you go to IGN.com right now, there's a, a four up. If you scroll down, it says the best of Black Friday and it's IGN's deals. It's Amazon deals. It's like the best in TVs or there's a bunch of different categories. So check it out if you're looking. Of course, these oh, are yeah. skewed towards our audience too. So you're going to see a bunch of socks. Maybe you will sometimes because everyone likes <laughs> If socks. they're like Star Wars socks, but you'll probably see yeah. them on there. Video yeah. game socks. I sent, yeah. I sent Seth Macy an email the other day that was like Sonic socks. <laughs> like someone was selling Sonic the Hedgehog socks and Seth was like, I'm adding this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so be sure to check that out. Um, so let's uh, head on over to the news. Yeah. So first up, we have Microsoft is allegedly preparing a new diskless Xbox One. Not the next box, just the Xbox One. So we're going to get potentially another unit for Xbox One. Um, the report on Thorot.com, apparently it's supposed to be released in 2019 sometime, possibly as early as spring, and will sell for $200 or less. The rumor also maintains that any Scarlet consoles would end up coming later sometime in 2020. So this is a rumor, again, just mm -hmm. to push that back in. But rumor, rumor. That'd be interesting for yeah. them to put out another the, the part that model. Yeah. really, really intrigued me was Microsoft apparently also working yep. on disk to digital exchange program. Yes. So you go to the store, you say, here's my disk. They're like, all right, here's your code. Yeah. Yeah. That is really intriguing to me. Yeah. So what's so interesting about this is there is a gradual shift toward what the Xbox One was originally going to be in 2013 yeah. before the backlash about always on, have to check in once every 24 hours. Granted, back then it was probably too extreme given mm -hmm. you know what everyone was used to. Yeah. Um, this this seems like a very gradual shift that is allowing people to opt into a digital only console if that's what they want. Yeah. Uh, but isn't forcing it on everyone. So if you still want your discs, if you still want you know yeah. all of that, that's still for you. Yeah, the problem with that Xbox One launch is I, I look back at it often and I'm like, this is what we are where we're at today. Like a lot of places. We're almost there. Things. Yeah, yeah. Are, there are there are a couple that. points. Mm -hmm. But they said, no, this is how it's gonna be too bad. Yeah. And like they were really it's confrontational. It was, it was too with their rigid. Audience. Yeah. I'm like, why are you like you're shooting yourself in the foot? Well, why are you handling it? That's the thing, thing. is like I'm so it, glad Phil's there now. It was it was very much a we know what's best for you. Yeah. And we know which direction the industry is going. And to be fair, they probably do. Like they, they, they have a room full of people who are paid very well to know where this industry is headed. Um, it was too abrupt at the time. I think is the big mm -hmm. is the big problem. Abrupt yeah. and rigid, like you said, and rigid, especially yeah. in a in a world where not everyone has that awesome wireless internet speed. Yeah, like some people have to buy physical because they don't have that internet. Like they and, live and out. People and just like physical things still too. That too that's mm -hmm. important just like to be able to hold that box and say this is part of my collection and have yeah. that really cool display of i still have a box games. of pc Absolutely. games and I, I like having that box to know all the ones that i bought in my lifetime it still blows me away when i walk through target and i see pc games sold in boxes <laughs> yeah me too like, yeah I just oh my god PC this is like, bringing me back no, you open it up drive. there's a code in there <laughs> 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 yes yeah, yeah. yeah. realistically yeah. yeah there's no cd it's just a steam code mm -hmm. um but I do think it's sometimes it's important for uh, companies to drag us kicking and, and screaming into the future. And, and where I don't think it should be forced on us, companies like Apple who have, have brought out technology. Their attitude, though. Yeah. Like they've, they've said that tone. I think the thing that was drawing with, with Microsoft is it didn't feel right for them mm -hmm. as far as like what we've come to expect like, from them. It's who like, are oh, you? playful and yeah. cool. And then it's just like, this is the future. We're like, excuse me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Join well, the collective. Yeah. Then there were the interviews they did that were super yeah. aggressive. Like we, we can look in retrospect and just see how that was handled improperly. And there, there was definitely a way they could have presented it and been met with a more favorable response. Yeah. Right. I think, yeah. I think as a first impression, that was probably a bad call. Um, but, you know, like you said, what they said back then is sort of where we're at right now. So yep. this gradual shift into that is nice, but there's still the option for people. So would you guys be interested in a diskless Xbox One? Um, as my secondary, yeah, I think. I have two Xbox Ones at home right now. Um, mm -hmm. I use my Xbox One X for all my gaming and stuff like that, and my Xbox One is in my bedroom for Netflix and all, all that stuff. I would use a discless one um, for, as a stream box, basically. Mm. But, you know. I'm really curious if this is a thing, how big it would be. Because I could see it as being... Probably smaller than the X. Yeah, right? it'd be nice to like, travel with, potentially. Oh, yeah, that would That's be That's what really I was cool. thinking. I wonder, oh. though. I wonder if they would do that. Because then you're you're not only removing the disc, which isn't or the disc drive, which to me doesn't seem like that big of a deal, but you're like cha you're changing That's pretty big. You're changing the form factor of a machine, and that means a redesign and all of that. I don't I don't know 
like how much more, marketing how much more work that would go into it yeah i mean if you're releasing a new model i'd expect it to have some sort of fanfare around it for he sure. pulls it out of his pocket yeah here it is <laughs> do you remember the yeah. psx yeah yeah it was it was like that tiny thing and i carried it around in my pocket i thought it was the coolest thing <laughs> when i was a kid um i don't think it'll ever get that small but mm. maybe like an xbox one slim yeah I, I would I would like that I would like a slimmer model because I think a lot of people would be really interested in that. Yeah. I really like my X though. I like yeah. having the disc option. I don't I don't really need another console. So if it's I, cheap, I'd consider it. Yeah, so well, I consider it because I still have the original launch Xbox One. Oh wow, it's it's chugging. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel really famous. bad for it, but I want I don't I don't have a 4K TV, so I can't really take advantage of the X as much as I'd like to. And so I think I'm still like a year off yeah. from that. So if this say were to come out, then potentially I could just have that in the meantime and then use it as like my travel unit or something whenever time comes out. Two hundred dollars or less. That is a really, really good price point for something like this. And uh check out our Black Friday deals, IGN deals. I was for, just for going to say that. <laughs> Beat you to it. You stole my cheeky yeah. reference. You know the best place to find deals on 4K TV is I've on Black heard. Friday. Yeah. IGN.com. Get competitive. Well, interesting. So we'll see uh if that that yeah. happens at all. Um, but more importantly, a thing that we know for sure is happening is that Sony is skipping E3, which is huge because now the stage is kind of Microsoft's. Mm -hmm. And of course, the other third party studios that yeah. put on their own presentations, but those always have a different sort of fanfare around them, right? Can I be excused mm -hmm. from E3? <laughs> <laughs> If I said bye, Felicia, is that throwing shade? I don't know. Really get the. Right I don't know. Try it. Okay. Bye, no, that Felicia. Is, that is kind of throwing shade. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I was How say. could you say something so bold? Uh, so. So we talked a little bit about this off air, Brandon and I. And uh, what's your take? Because last year they had that disaster of a press conference, <laughs> and then. This year they're just like, yeah, we need to we need to step back. So I wouldn't say that Sony's press conference was a disaster. Last year it was. It was just weird. Well, okay, so for you for don't like the flute man for context. <laughs> oh, that was not good. Yeah. For context, Destin was in the room. Oh, really? Destin yes. was part of was the long. unit that was. And everyone shuffled. was mad. Yeah, I could see that being tough because he had to move through all his like sets essentially. It's insane to me that they sacrificed the viewers, the millions of viewers at home, <laughs> for the experiential effect of you guys. In the in the in, in the, a barn, yeah, in the presence, <laughs> like in, in that in that area, like moving from tent to tent to tent, yeah. And then people at home were watching. Uh, there were fifteen minutes of commentary between. <laughs> yeah. We stand each. by. We we were sorry. I, we <laughs> were confused. We missed a bunch of news. I yeah. missed the Forsaken reveal and things like that. And like having being the host of the Destiny show, that was kind of important to see. Yeah. So there were trailers for Call of Duty and. Other journalists were there for other major outlets, and they're like, "What the hell? We're like, we're missing news right now. Mm. We're supposed to be here to cover news. What is this experiential thing they're doing?" But how was Flute Man? It was terrible. <laughs> the whole thing was bad. Oh. Man. That was, it was tried his best. It's not a yeah. good. He played, After Flute Man he was played, fine. I was too mad. <laughs> he played Flute very well. Just it just wasn't a great red. look. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, hear anything. yeah, it's I was like, old. why are we in this room? Why is there a guy <laughs> playing a flute? <laughs> I don't what. <laughs> Yeah. No one can hear the flute oh. over the sound of you just seething rage <laughs> in the back. Yeah, the audio wasn't great. Uh, All right, so yeah, so this comes, this quote comes via Game Informer. Um, this is from Sony. Is As the industry evolves, Sony Interactive Entertainment continues to look for. <laughs> Inventive opportunities to engage the community. As a result, we have decided not to participate in E3 in 2019. Or PSX. So this year they didn't do PSX. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean they won't do it next year. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> uh, it <laughs> is then, fair. And then uh, Microsoft confirmed on Twitter that they can't wait to see us all at E3 2019. So that's good. Um, what wait, is Sony doing? They, I don't get. Oh, micro, I mean, Microsoft my, said they can't. Wait. I okay. just I just I like, miss what? the goofs because it's just like it's fun to have those like little like. E3 report cards of how everyone's conference went and all like the highlight <laughs> gag reels. So like, here's a, do we give Sony an F or do we just... <laughs> no, it was a no-show. No yeah. Show. Did not participate. No call, no-show. <laughs> no, they had a parents note. They already told us they weren't going to be here. So they dropped out. So this uh, <laughs> Yeah, okay. So this works. This doesn't actually surprise me as much as it probably could have considering looking at Sony's first party roster, which is really what they tout uh, at E3. You've got Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Days Gone, which will be out in That's spring, funny. and then Dreams, which may still come out. I, I don't know. Maybe it'll be a, a cross-platform PS5 stuff. game. Yeah, um, 
you can, I don't think you can really build a press conference, especially leaning into what they were doing. Do you remember two years ago where they had the symphony and they started playing and God of War happened? And it was awesome. And then last was a year, great conference. last year they had four big games that they were really putting all their money into. Um, didn't didn't quite work out the way that they had intended. Microsoft rocked it last year. If Microsoft keeps up that cadence, it's going to be great. Mm, Microsoft like, conference felt like an old Sony conference. Yeah. Just because what Sony's thing was, it was just punch out so many announcements. Yeah. Like announcement after announcement. Also, they yeah. have a pre-show with plenty of announcements. And that was just their thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so seeing them change from that, like I don't think it's bad for them to try something new, especially if they have fewer things at a show that are so far off and they can only so sh show so much. Um, but I am so glad to see Microsoft doing that as well. And I hope we get mm -hmm. to see a little bit more of that next year as well. Yeah. But there's a lot of room for them to try something creative too, because if Sony's not sharing the stage with them on this big presentation, then they can kind of maybe take more time to focus on some of their bigger offerings. Like I'd, I of course want to see more of Gears of War. Like yeah. Or just I Gears. love to see like a check in of just like, Hey, here's all the studios we bought and mm -hmm. like they're working on some really cool stuff mm -hmm. and it's not going to be out yet. Obviously we just got them, yeah. but yeah. Here's the roadmap. I, I would be I would be careful with that because I remember what EA did with their Star Wars thing, where it's like people using Illustrator tablets and like we're working on Star Wars right now, <laughs> but that's not that's not really fulfilling. So I would I would love like a Phil Spencer comes out and he's like we've acquired 13 new studios and here's two more that we just bought this morning. Oh yeah, and then Almost and then it's like, Sony Santa Monica, no. <laughs> and then it's like clearly. <laughs> <laughs> we now own the last two. Uh, clearly, nothing is ready yet, but... Uh, and then just like a sexy CGI trailer for the Initiatives game, which isn't going to happen because that is I think that is way far off. Yeah, right. I think they shut off games from their other studios they acquired instead because I'm yeah. sure when they went about acquiring them, they probably already had things in development or I'd like to think yeah. that they've been yeah. planning things. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure at least one or, or two of those studios has something ready to show for next year. Yeah. Um, and if not, then they have, of course, like I said, Gears, and then hopefully Halo, because we got such a little tease. Like, we don't know anything about that yet. Mm -hmm. And I think they have a lot of room to let that breathe if it's going to be ready soon. Yeah. Uh, Wait, well, well, when did Gears 4 come out? That was last uh, year? It's 2016. Two years ago? Yeah, it's been a while. Because I did the IGN first for Gears 4. Okay. The first one. Well, Gears Gears has been on a three year development cycle. So yeah, I know. <laughs> Gears is on a three year development cycle. So five comes out next year, yeah. or the or the yeah. following year. Yeah, I imagine Halo Infinite is. I think we're getting into like twenty twenty range now, yeah. and we so, want to stay in twenty nineteen. But I I do think like we see Halo Infinite there be a, a pretty big presence. Two thousand nineteen is going to be great. Will Will Sony be there? in any capacity will they do a side thing like so. over over with the food trucks like uh <laughs> no like uh, share devol devolvers oh. like devolver does actually lot. if they could share devolvers lot that'd be kind of yeah. cute that's me but they're not going to be at e3 that is an interesting take destin Their because conference yes because isn't easy. ea does the same thing they yeah. don't participate in e3 what they do is the e the ea fan fest yeah during the week of E3, gosh, it's like it's cool. It's at the Palladium, pain. halfway across town. Because mm -hmm. maybe this is like, oh, we have to spend all this money to have a booth at E3. Yeah. We have these four games; two are ready to show. We should probably like do something somewhere else, yeah. and save the cash because it, it's still a lot of money, but it's probably less than being in that space. That's what I'm at. Yeah, and in Sony's booth, if you've never been to E3, Sony's booth takes up about half of one whole hall. Yeah, Ryan did a fantastic article by the way, about what he thinks that they might be doing. Mm -hmm. um, That's interesting that not participating in E3 could still mean they'll have a presence there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the Smash Burger. Delicious. So to, that's 2019. I'm really excited for 2020 because it means that both Microsoft and Sony are going to bring their A game and go out swinging against each other. And I like a good fight. I hope everyone's trying along. to show us I something can't in the read back, it. and we have no idea what we're time. looking at. Uh, it says PlayStation, PlayStation Senior Vice President of Communications Jennifer Clark answered, "We will not activate or hold a press conference around E3." All right, okay. no, pr no press conference. So they're not going to be in LA. Thanks. Got Thank you. Got it. They don't uh, need to activate it because it's already been activated. Oh my god, <laughs> it was never unactivated. <laughs> uh, so, so I mean, yeah. So that, maybe that PSX then. Yeah, maybe they need that extra six months before they show another CG trailer for. 
um, or not CG trailer, before they show another cinematic trailer for Last of Us 2 or... Death Stranding. Death Stranding or Ghost of Tsushima. Oh, God, I forgot and Death Stranding when I talked earlier. So to me, E3 has... E3 has been like the big premiere event for everybody, but it's also sort of shifted into this sort of consumer show mm -hmm. where it used to be for sort of reserved and really a coveted experience. And now like, oh yeah, you can go if you just pay the cash. And like the ESA is constantly talking about how many attendees have been yeah. there. And I question the people who went, uh, a few of my friends went and they're like, oh man, I was, I was kind of disappointed. Like you can't play anything. There's huge lines. Yeah. And yeah, the that's great for the ESA. I wonder if, if that's great for the people going to the event and the the brands that are choosing to like the Sony booth in particular. Last year, like if mm -hmm. you didn't check in at like five in the morning, yeah, everything was booked out for the whole day. Really? Right. Yeah. And, and Nintendo, was, the lines were huge too. Yeah. Nintendo's yeah, the, usually the, better than Nintendo the other ones. Nintendo adapted yeah. because they realized that like, hey, instead of having like all these different things, let's just have these one main. Uh, thing to showcase, yeah. yep. whether it was Mario or the, whether it was Sm Smash Brothers. And I was able even to just get in a walk-in line for Smash Brothers because they knew, okay, this is our big thing. We'll have our lines just for this, have a bunch of stations. Mm -hmm. But with PlayStation, they have a lot of different things to go to. And all of those things are small experiences and they all booked out really quickly. As the E3 event became more and more and more open to the public, I, I always had a concern that it would detract from the experience that is E3. Um, and I'm wondering if we're starting to see the sort of effects of that with EA doing a side thing and uh, Sony doing PSX and Microsoft doing FanFest. I'm excited by it because it means we're going to get a, a regular beat of news and interesting things mm -hmm. happening mm -hmm. throughout the year. And it's not all going to be at E3. Rather than 50% of our coverage comes out of E3. Exactly. So, so it's good in that respect, I think. Yeah, I think spreading it out throughout the year is is much uh, it, it's much better for fans, not not just press, not just us. Like, yeah. you know, we we will find stuff to do to cover. Uh, that's not that's not. There's the always concern. something at E3. Yeah. Well, no, throughout the year is what I'm saying. And through, oh gosh, there's always yeah. something throughout yeah. the year. <laughs> so like, it was nuts this year. Yeah. So, but it's much better for fans to like get that those awesome announcements at E3 and then get a little update at XO and then you know something comes around at GDC or a uh, PAX. Um, like spreading out throughout the year is great rather than just having. You know, you're one big like fire everything mm -hmm. for one week. I think the has been good without the directs. Like they have their focus directed E3, yeah. and mm -hmm. then it's just like a couple months later. Oh, hey, here's some other stuff. And then a couple months later, oh, here's 3DS. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's some more Smash stuff. And, and then like people keep getting interested. I really liked PSX, the events that I've gone to, and I think the Microsoft Fan Fest looked really, really promising. Yeah, it looked a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I they had a lot of panels, and of course a lot of demos, and like just cool people to meet as well. Yeah, I like that a lot. Like these mega brands, sort of saying, "Hey, here's what we got coming. Come play, hang out. We're gonna make a have a, like a little cool hour long press conference or two. Mm -hmm. It was two hours, right, for Microsoft? Yeah, it was two hours. Yeah, I like that a lot, actually. Ryan did provide a good note that for E3 next year, yeah. uh, third parties will probably mostly be on Microsoft stage. Unless someone oh. does anything before E3, they're all mm -hmm. just going to, their time to shine is going to be that stage. That's you know? true. That'll be interesting. That's yeah. a really good point. My thoughts were uh, Sony and Microsoft have always been on different days, right? Mm -hmm. Microsoft was Monday, I want to say, or maybe Sunday. Do you and think Bethesda will take that spot? I don't know. Maybe. Um, but I do know if a third party is looking to partner with a first party, mm -hmm. I wonder if that then bloats Microsoft's conference. Yeah. Well, if they're going to, if have it goes to a cool two hours now, you know, they'll have the pick of the litter, so to speak. And then we still have conferences for Ubisoft, EA and Bethesda off the top of my head and Devolver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. We laugh. We laugh not because Devolver is small, but because, because Devolver's wacky. conferences are insane. Yeah, yeah. Movie, have them. and maybe Square yeah. Enix. Uh, yeah, Square Enix hasn't done a conference. They did, no, they, they, they did a they did last year? tape thing or they, something. They did their very weird thing yeah. last year. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Nvidia, of course, and the PC if you're gamers, in the Nvidia yeah. shows. Yeah, yeah. It's full of surprises. Yeah, yeah. Interested to see what happens next, though. Yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting year. That's for sure. I'm excited. Me too. I'm, I'm so, and I love the inside Xbox regular drip feed every month of information yeah. and news, but I'm so, so excited to see how Microsoft does in 2019 and then into 2020, like everything's coming up Microsoft, you know, like <laughs> that, it's, 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 there's momentum now and it feels yeah. good, man. It feels good to be able to talk about stuff mm -hmm. that you can be excited about and not, you know, a, a, a rumor that maybe something is in the works, you know, we have Looking concrete next evidence. Year. I remember your first request for Inside Xbox. I was like, ugh, like an hour long thing. 
And then it got better and better. I'm like, all right, I kind of like it now. Like, yeah. I, I get what they were going for, and it's they are, starting to work. They are improving. Mm-hmm. Um, that show is finally coming into its own, and yeah. and there are legitimate news nuggets in that yeah. in inside Xbox now. Uh, so it's cool to see Rukari on there because I met him when Killer Instinct launched. Yeah, and he's like, what help do you need? Like, what do you want to capture? We he was the new he character. was a community manager at, yeah. at uh, Double Helix. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a really nice guy. Yeah. Well, awesome. Yeah. Well, only time will tell what we'll see next. Um, and with that, we're done with our news. Oh. So, yeah, congratulations. We are going to get into our loot box segment. This week, we are taking a topic from inside, inside our own office instead of taking a fan oh. question. So um, just, I think this is Ryan's thing that he wanted us to talk about. So Ugh, It's oh. in getting. <laughs> oh, so he's suffering I'm in the DMV getting. right now. Be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so just a quick reminder, if you don't remember what loot boxes, every week we kind of take either a fan question, um, we talk about air anniversaries, trends, um, game pass, just kind of whatever kind of piques our interest that week. Mm-hmm. And this week in the United States, we have a holiday coming up called Thanksgiving, if you've, if you've never heard of it. It's pretty popular here. Mm-hmm. Lots of food. Okay, um, and October. it's also a time to be thankful for things. Hence the name. Yep. So uh, Ryan would like us to Wait, talk what? about. <laughs> I don't know if you knew, <laughs> but Thanksgiving's about being Thanksgiving, thankful. Thanksgiving, <laughs> no, I celebrate Turkey Day. <laughs> no, yeah, Turkey Day. Um, so Ryan would like us to talk about what games we're thankful for. Specifically, one game, if you can do that, it could be past, present, oh. he says, or whatever. Something that you're generally thankful to have in your life for whatever reason. What may, these what, what, um, just video games, or are we talking about everything? Just video games. Right. Save your personal stuff. I had something the table. totally different okay. prepared. <laughs> I didn't know it was one game. Now I don't know what to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say how thankful I was to work at a company where I get to play video games and then make creative content about video games. Heck yeah. So, That's the yeah. easy answer. Yeah. You can pick a game. I have one. Okay. If well, you guys, you guys aren't can ready. go. Oh, okay. go. You mean you're just say Zelda. Zelda no. We know. No. Yes, obviously no. Dota 2, <laughs> okay. but aside from that, I actually wanted to talk a little bit about Fusion Frenzy, oh, which is a okay. one that I goofingly bring up every now and then about like, yeah, get a new remake of that. Um, but the reason I always bring it up is because it is so close to my heart. Um, it is one of the few games that I was able to play with literally anyone mm-hmm. growing up and I didn't have a lot of friends that were really into video games. Mm-hmm. So I play a lot with my siblings and then like one or two people that I connected with. Um, but whenever all of my younger friends would come over, we'd all play Fusion Frenzy. Like that was the one every single time we could all get into, like even my parents. And then as my little siblings got a little bit older, we could play that together. And so like even till now we play Fusion Frenzy and it's something special. So I'm really thankful for that. I thought of one of you guys still any time. Oh no, I got I can go now. Oh. Um it was hard to choose for different reasons, but I think I have to go even though it's been a love hate relationship, I think I'm very thankful for World of Warcraft. Oh, okay. And that is strange to say, but looking back, I played from I think two thousand five when it came out for probably a good five years, maybe, maybe a little less than that. Um and it really was the first real game to teach me how nice other people could be in an online community and how to mm-hmm. be a part of those communities. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think before then I hadn't really dabbled too much in like having guilds or communities and discords and whatever. And we had a like Ventrilo server or the guild that I found in World of Warcraft, Saints of War. I love them very much. Mm-hmm. And like having those friends and making really people around the world for all our differences and our, our weird quirks the way we came together, the way we laughed and shared stories, and the way we eventually, you know, connected on Facebook and are still friends to this day, like it is a a thing that could have only happened on that, at least for me. And it's taught me a lot going forward about other online communities and, you know, reach out to people. And I'm really thankful for those experiences and the people that I met. Cool. That's really good cool. story, Brandon. Yeah. I miss those guys. We have Facebook at least. Yeah. <laughs> Not all of my Facebook. Just World of Warcraft is still going. You guys can get back into it. It's true. That we had a one good member <laughs> who was a, a a Vietnamese guy named Lovely Girl. Didn't speak any English, well, broken English, <laughs> and it was he was hilarious. Yeah, I kind of want to meet Lovely Girl. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, um, sorry, Brandon. Go ahead. I'll, I'll go. Mine's short. Um, 
I don't really have one single game that I'm super thankful for. I just I play a lot of different games uh, for a lot of different reasons. The one that comes to mind immediately right now is because I'm stuck in Fallout. I'm not because I'm playing Fallout 76 <laughs> with a group of friends that I made while I was reviewing my very first game for IGN as a freelancer. Uh, it was an MMO called Wild Star. Oh, now defunct by Carbine Studios. Um, I just randomly ran across these two guys playing, and one of them threw me an invite and i jumped in and after about a day playing i was like all right i guess i'll jump on your event server and so i started talking to them very wary about meeting people on the internet like you do um and that was five years ago and they are playing fallout 76 with me because i need help and they played sea of thieves with me they are my go-to guys when I need help on a multiplayer game and uh, I'm super super thankful for them so Richie and Leo uh, shout out to you guys thank you for all your help Brandon knowing you personally and knowing how you feel about Facebook and Twitter and not really utilizing those platforms very much uh, that's actually pretty cool Thanks. Yeah, you met some yeah. people online and had a good experience. Yeah, you step out of your comfort zone you never know what could happen Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought of mine uh, it's Halo and I know that sounds like a little bit of a cop out. Sure. But I was going to choose that too. There's, it's just hard. It's the, hard. The original Halo uh, is a fantastic game, and it not only brought me back into gaming. I bought the Halo console. I bought a GameCube, and I bought. I had a PS2 at the time, but uh, Halo really, really got me back in and back in on, the, or really into the Xbox platform specifically. Mm-hmm. And then Halo Three was the the first video I ever made online. Uh, I entered it into a contest and I won and it funded my video production career basically. I won $1000 and I bought I used that money to buy a tripod and a video camera <laughs> and I started making user movies on game trailers and then my career started from that. Wow. Yeah. So that's such so, a cool story. Yeah, so Halo 3 kind of started my video career and Halo 1 got me back into gaming in a, in a, in a big way because huh? it was it was a cool game. You won $1000? Yeah, from game trailers. That's they used awesome. to do a user they used to do user movie contest and it was another guy had won, but he had made that video like a year ago and just entered it and the rules said you had to make the video after the announcement. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Hey, uh <gasps> so I came in second. You ratted out the first place <laughs> Totally. That's fair. <laughs> That's totally. The, you had to put so much hard work into that and he just submitted an old yeah, video. Like I spent right, a week worked on it. That's such a destined move yeah. and I no. love it. Yeah. That is so I spent a week. Teacher, there's a uh, technicality here. I would yeah. say never change, but apparently you haven't. So that, that is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, fair is fair. You can't just submit a video you made 15 years ago and had two, had it six months to develop. Someone just rips an episode of Red versus Blue and they're yeah. like, here, it's yeah, here's, uh, here's I made this my, yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that the most you've ever won from a video game? Uh, I mean, after that, I was in the industry, so yeah. I didn't enter any competitions after that. Yeah. I had a job doing news for three years. So, yeah. cool. very nice. Thank you guys for sharing. Yeah. yeah, it's always hard to choose these. I think mine changes every year depending on how I'm feeling. Yeah. It's like, who it's, do I want to care about today? It's <laughs> tough. Even if you're thankful for stuff, it's yeah. hard to like put it into words. Yeah. My mom still does that thing around the table. It's like, everyone say one thing you're thankful for before we eat. <laughs> I'm thankful for food. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm thankful for all of these side dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I think if we do that this year, I'm gonna, that's where I'm going to spiel out the Dota thing, just to bother my sister. My twin sister hates Dota because yeah. of like a boyfriend she had in, in high school. And I'm just like, hey, I spend so much money on Dota. Sorry. <laughs> anyway. F- favorite side dishes at Thanksgiving? Mine's th- uh, stuffing. Also stuffing. Yeah, my mom makes uh, artichoke stuffing. Ooh, Ooh. I can't even pick, man. We go four for four stuffing. Just say stuffing. Do do (laughs) do deviled eggs count as a side dish? Yes, yes. I love deviled eggs. They're pretty good. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, my mom makes deviled eggs for Thanksgiving. I've seen that. Yeah, that's like a summer food. What barbecue? Yeah, Brandon. Barbecue food. (laughs) It's a barbecue food, but it's also a Thanksgiving (laughs) side dish. D- all right. First yeah, of all, sorry, no, we're not going to allow it, Brandon. You are not the expert on holiday side dishes. Uh, deviled eggs are 100 percent of Thanksgiving food. She knows, and I want to hear God give me the it. experts. It's like I'm home. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know the best side dish. <laughs> Aggressive arguments with family. Uh, outside of that, it's probably stuffy. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to call it four for four. We're going to say no. Or black olive. Oh my God. Okay. Before we sign off, black olive. I think it'd be most appropriate for us to. Sign off arguing. 
for Thanksgiving episode. Yeah. It's yeah. not really a Thanksgiving episode, but with that in mind. <laughs> um, but before we do go, I want you guys to be able to shout out what you're working on because we do have a lot going on this holiday break mm-hmm. for us. We have a lot going up on our agenda. Even though we're gone, we have a lot ready. So. <laughs> You just wanna <laughs> I'm not working on anything in particular. <laughs> I feel like I don't know what you're doing. I, I really don't. I don't want to start like the top just of the been... show talking about Fallout and end the show talking about Fallout. I will. I feel like I'll you've just been hill. gone. Yeah, I have. Not working on anything at all. Not important. You just. <laughs> uh, yeah, my review for Fallout goes up tomorrow. So this check spicy that out. You can find me on Twitter at Brandon Tyrell. What's the thing that you want to talk about for a sec- split second? What's your favorite dessert? So you don't have to end on Fallout. Uh, Thanksgiving dessert or in general? I don't care. <laughs> Thanksgiving dessert is pumpkin pie. In general, is cheesecake. You got bam. <laughs> that wasn't even on purpose. You got bam. You can serve both okay. of Thanksgiving, by the way, Brendan. Uh, that's all you. I am also working on Fallout on the 76 guide, so you can check out our interactive map, all of our tips and tricks. If you choose to play that game, unlike Destin, who's salty over there, uh, and you can no, I mean, spicy. He's spicy. <laughs> I'm working on a feature that <laughs> seven reasons Fallout 76 sucks. <laughs> that's for it's real not, what I'm working on. That's not the headline. That's oh, you're not right. the headline. Seven reasons Fallout 76 is a failure is the headline. Is that the headline? That's what Tina pitched. Uh, <laughs> dang. Uh, I have been, I reviewed Pokemon Let's Go. It's very pleasant. <laughs> and I'm still working on the Red Dead Wiki because that game will never end. Are you going to be come on back and help Red Red Dead one day, I promise. Uh, probably. Probably help with that. What sucks is like by the time you get to a point where you're like, ah, Red Dead, it's a clean we're in a up. good spot. Now online. online comes out. Oh, it'll be fun though. Uh, but that's that's about it. So thank you guys so much for dealing with our goofiness today. And I hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving if you're not in the States. And if you're not, just have a wonderful week. Bye. <laughs>